Hey, Mike here. Uh, it's Labor Day. I wanted to uh, acknowledge there's two commenters uh, yesterday. Uh, one of them was, let's see, it was, it was Donald Woodman, and the other one was uh, Yuha Yuriki. Anyway, um, there were uh, pretty good questions and comments there. Uh, the first one I'll acknowledge there was uh, about the swing compressor. Uh, I did a video about two months ago about an RV fridge that a buddy of mine gave me. And uh, it's interesting because it's 12 volt DC. Um, people think that's something that's kind of new, but uh, it's been around for several decades. Um, there's a Japanese company, uh, Sawa Fuji, that made this swing compressor. And they've been making this thing for, I don't know, 30 or 40 years. And uh, it's pretty reliable, it's really rugged, it has one moving part, it's, uh, it's a reciprocating uh, swing compressor. Um, it's, uh, it's been well tested in the, um, sorry, the Ingle, uh, refrigerator company, Engel Refrigerators and Freezers, um, out of Australia. Um, I, I thought they were the only uh, company that used them, but uh, as this commenter pointed out, that fridge that I have, it's, it's Norcold, uh, and I think it was made in the U.S., is what he suggested. Um, anyway, I'm interested in that compressor. Um, right now I'm running a 120 volt AC uh, little, I think it's a rotary compressor. Um, uh, but eventually I'm going to switch to DC. Now as far as going to DC, pretty much the only options um, other than the swing compressor are to go for like a Danfoss C-Cop um, uh, permanent magnet motor uh, that uses like the three-phase DC converter. And one of the reasons I didn't want to go that direction is because of, um, of the controller that's for it. Um, it it's, um, it's, it's not that it's complicated. I mean, it is. It's not something that I would be able to build myself or to repair. Um, it's kind of a common item. Uh, uh, Sean Dobby, uh, the guy from Scotland there, he uses a bike, uh, uh, bike motor controller uh, on his compressor, and it seems to work just fine. So, I mean, it's pretty standard technology, but I'm trying to keep it super simple, super duper simple. So, the swing compressor is interesting um, because it uh, just uses an oscillator. Um, I think it's 20 or 25 volt AC uh, at 60 hertz. So, uh, all it needs is a pretty simple oscillator to, in order to run that off the DC current and then um, just a step down transformer if you want to run it off of uh, 120 AC or 2, 240 AC. Um, the only issue that I have with grabbing something like that is I don't know if I can even acquire it. Uh, a little bit of internet searching, I haven't been able to find one. Um, I'm sure they're available, but um, however, you know, Engel and and this company, Sawa Fuji, do their business. Uh, they, you know, Sawa Fuji, they might only be wholesale. And uh, so if I wanted to try to get a hold of a spare, maybe I'd have to go through Engel or something like that. I'm not sure. Um, so it's definitely something I'm considering. Um, and if it looks like it's something I'm going to be able to get a hold of, I'm probably going to rip that other swing compressor out of that old unit and, uh, and see how well it works. Um, one of the only drawbacks I see of a compressor like that is it's it's kind of like a, a Pringles can or something. It's a little bit of an odd shape. And although I'm sure I'd be able to mount it, um, it's a it's a very different uh, mounting than a conventional compressor. And I'm trying to design this unit in such a way that uh, it's somewhat modular, and the uh, the mounting system for it allows you to to mount a number of different types of compressors in there, different shapes and sizes depending on what your application is, or if if you um, if decades down the road there was a failure or something like that you needed to replace it um, so anyway I'm glad that that uh, that commenter mentioned that because uh, it's, it's it is something that I'm interested in doing um, and I'm glad they did that provided me a couple of links there so I'll try to include a link to that uh, a little bit of a description of what what that swing compressor is in the comments or in the notes on this video here um, the other the all the other commenter that I mentioned um, I just forgot his name here Give me a second. Donald Woods. Donald Woods. If I got that wrong the first time, I apologize. Um, Donald Woods, apparently, he works on ice machines. I just uh, uh, hope you watch this video here. Um, I, uh, I'm really enjoying the machine that I have going now. It's running really smoothly. Um, uh, I just have the dry type evaporator in the back. It seems to be doing the job really well. Uh, it is kind of overcooling the bottom. I'm not getting good air circulation. I'm thinking about putting like just a plate of, of uh, plexiglass or something as a, as a baffle to try to get a little bit of air circulation going on in there because it's tending to want to freeze everything in the bottom. Um, uh, if you watch any of the other videos there, I, I did a lot of stuff with glycol. But I didn't have a very large heat exchanger because my, my plan was eventually to make a, uh, a 
some additional fittings or something on a, on a tank like this. And uh, you see it a lot better in some of the other videos there. Um, probably one of the reasons that I went for the stainless steel pan is uh, I've seen some, some eutectic plates that are used for like marine refrigeration. Um, and they used a, uh, a two inch long pan. Um, it's about, you know, yay wide and about that long. <laughs> Um, and then two inches thick, and then it's mounted vertically, like say on the back wall of a refrigerated space or on the side wall. And uh, like I said, it's, it's filled with some kind of eutectic salt, such that the compressor system is able to run and cool that thing down and, and charge it full of cool, um, freeze it essentially. And then over the course of several hours or a day or so, it's able to keep the contents of the uh, refrigerator cold. I'm interested in eutectic plates. Uh, mostly I'm interested in uh, just any kind of thermal mass. Um, trying to get the, the right uh, uh, temperature point for a, a eutectic solution. I don't know how much I want to go down that, that path right there. Um, and some of the chemicals, some of the substances that are used for that purposes or, or purpose are uh, a little toxic. So um, I kind of like to just keep it simple and just go with like a glycol or some kind of methanol solution. Um, the, only, the only issue that I have is I'm trying to design this unit in such a way that uh, it could be used in a variety of different cabinet sizes. Um, you know, not a huge variety, but so, you know something different where I'm not specifically designing the, re the refrigeration unit for one particular application. Um, it could be taller, it could be wider, it could be deeper, it could have more or less insulation. Um, uh, it, depending on what the kind of shelves are, how many shelves there are in it, or how it's loaded or something, um, I have to consider all those things and how I'm trying to build it. So. You know, although I really want to go with something with a lot more thermal mass, uh, because I can cool it down and have longer run times and then longer off times, um, my only issue with that is if I'm able to cool a tank like that down sufficiently, it's eventually going to get a frost coating on it, and then over the course of the next, you know, maybe a few hours, it's uh, warmed up by the contents of the refrigerator and, and thus cools the refrigerator. Um, my only issue is that in maybe one installation of this, or multiple installations of this, um, if, say, for instance, the refrigerator cabinet has a, a thin wall and uh, there's a pretty rapid absorption of, of heat, and you know, there's a high heat load on the system, and uh, that, say, it's a gallon or so of, of glycol solution in some kind of stainless steel heat exchanger, um, if the thermostat starts calling for cooling pretty often, and the heat exchanger, the, the pan itself, the glycol tank, isn't able to uh, supply that that cooling capacity very very effectively. Compressor continues to run because the thermostat continues to run, and that frost formation continues to build and build and build and build and build. Um, whether it does that all, you know, kind of at once or just over several cycles. Um, so I have a little bit of concern about that. Um, it's one of the reasons why I just have a dry type evaporator right now and it's nice and large so that it effectively thaws in every cycle. Um, so I don't have to deal with any kind of defrost or anything like that. Um, I could probably get around that a little better, have a, um, a mix of the two systems by having a, a plate uh, direct evaporator, but including on that some thermal mass, uh, like even like a plate with two welded you know, stainless steel tubes of glycol on either side of it or something like that. Uh, I'm also considering uh, just going with the dry type evaporator or whatever style of evaporator I go with and uh, trying to mess around with different kinds of phase change materials that could be placed in containers and placed you know around inside the refrigerated space or mounted up on the corners or up on the ceiling or on the walls or something like that such that the, uh, the um, evaporator coils aren't directly uh, cooling and freezing that phase change material and that phase change material isn't directly real uh, the, the cooling of the cabinet isn't directly reliant on the phase change material. You know, as much as I'd like to have that buffer, that intermediary between, uh, you know, the air in the cabinet and the, you know, the the, the uh, flashing refrigerant itself, um, there's a lot of design issues to, to consider since I'm not designing it for a specific cabinet, uh, specific cabinet. But uh, nonetheless, I'm going to keep exploring that, and I appreciate the comments and. Uh, um, keeps me thinking and stuff so you know drop me an email or uh, whatever I'd you know, be happy to talk more and the fact that you uh, you work on ice machines is really interesting to me because if I worked in the commercial field I think I'd probably want to work on ice machines ice machines are uh, very interesting
and I've done a little bit of work uh, researching uh, uh, building like a heat pump for, for the use in an environment where uh, an air to air heat pump no longer makes sense below a certain temperature and you could just make ice instead. Um, so uh, different types of uh, uh, continuous what, like scraping and flaking ice makers and stuff, that's, that's, that's some cool stuff. So I'd be curious to hear if you uh, have any uh, experience with machines like that. So anyway. That's pretty much what I wanted to do here. I, uh, you know, I did reply a little bit and give some comments, but I thought they were really good points, and I wanted to uh, to address them in uh, in a rambling format. So, thank you for watching.